All right, folks. So I am bored, but let's take a look at what the other company, quote unquote, is doing with their game. Now, before we get started, yes, I'm a World of Tanks Unicum. I've been playing for about 10 years now, so it's been a while, but <laughs> it's hard for me to get into another long grind of a game, so I'll just watch from the sidelines. But we have Artillery Cancer, War Thunder has Helicopter and Aircraft Cancer, and now there's something called Drone Age. So from my perspective, as an outsider playing a different competitive game to War Thunder, let's take a look. <laughs> Yeah, it's... oh god. <laughs> Where's the audio? There's no audio? Alright, fine. Um... The hell? It's just a trailer for a Hind MI-24? I play a lot of Operation Flashpoint, so... Cold War Soviet era vehicles are somewhat familiar. That's a Su-25 Frogfoot. I still prefer my Thunderbolts, thank you very much, but low altitude attack aircraft against tanks and practically infantry or other stuff, but um, there's no drones in this drone trailer. It's drone age. All right, fine. Skip ahead. Most replayed. Now, yep. how about we just go straight into it because I know people have been waiting for this for a long time. I want to show you first the a new vehicle type, I suppose, that's coming to the game called drones. Yes, Age of Drones Drone Age actually does have drones in the game. And here it is. This oh. is one of the two types of drones that are coming in the next update. This is the recon drone. It is an entirely uh, unarmed version without landing gear, without anything, that can be called in from any light tank rank 6 and above, which means that currently the lowest vehicles that can um, call this in would be the Sheridan, the uh, I think the Warrior as well, Bradley, a bunch yep. of 8.0 vehicles that can call this one in. Now, a few things to note about this one. Now, A, I may still be a noob at War Thunder, but I know tier 6 or battle rating 6.0 is somewhere around the mouse's battle rating, so... It's like tier 10 for World of Tanks. So technically, you shouldn't see drones with a Sherman or a Tiger or something. So that's good, but... <laughs> Alright, let's take a look. Uh, the Recon Drone is a researchable modification for these light tanks, which means you will need to respect your vehicles once the update comes out in order to be able to use these vehicles. Uh, the Recon Drone cannot actively scout vehicles that is something that we've seen people are have been a bit concerned about rest assured they will not be able to actively scout vehicles you'll have to do so yourself it is more of a tool to expand your awareness of the map you can of course still use the um scout marking function and you can fly around and so they have a you have to click and it's scout for you function for war thunder but unlike world of tanks where your light vehicles or any vehicles will automatically scout for you. So that's the difference. But most of the time, I think you should play War Thunder in authentic or just realistic mode without arcade mode. Because if you're playing arcade mode, in my preference, you get a wall hack. Everybody gets a wall hack. You see the outline and the name of the vehicle. Whereas you get one shot it all the time. So yeah, it's better not have the silhouette, right? Or the outline so play realistic therefore you need to use the spotting markers and stuff with uavs and i find just random details i think what people are going to be most interested in in terms of recon drone curious that's a that's an interesting helicopter you have there tom yeah it's my my favorite i love it very much what's it doing here just sitting there doing nothing yeah I'm just surveying the area, you know? Can, yeah. you, can you actually see anything? Can you hear anything right I now? I can't, I mean, I, I can't hear anything, but I also can't see either. I'm looking for stuff, but there's not really anything occurring, unfortunately. Well, I think you're about to see something very soon, because I am flying the world's hmm. slowest ground-to-air missile. That is quite slow, yeah. What? Oh, <laughs> I actually survived this time. What? <laughs> Absolutely incredible play. What? People will be glad to know that yes, these recon drones can be used to destroy enemy. It's a 70 kilometers per hour missile. <laughs> Didn't know what? That is so unfair. 
Oh, then again, helicopter is cancer, so it doesn't matter. Screw helicopters. I don't think you can crash into a tank or something like a truck and destroy the truck. So it's only for helicopters. Yeah, screw helicopter. It's like a bird strike, but you're playing a metal bird <laughs> against aircraft. <laughs> that is pretty dumb. <laughs> helicopters loitering around the space. You have a very long battery life on these, so you can basically fly them all game if you want to. Just keep in mind that if your controlling vehicle gets destroyed, it will also destroy, um, well, it will sever your connection to the drone. A few things to keep in mind, the drone cannot capture zones, it cannot land. Even if you go very, very slowly, you will simply explode on contact with the ground. And uh, it will also allow you, of course, to switch between the drone and the vehicle that you are controlling it with. But when you are in the vehicle view, the drone will not circle around. It will keep flying in a straight line, which means you will occasionally, every now and then, need to take control of the drone once again manually if you want to survey the area. It's very seamless, though. There you go. And of course, it can crash into buildings, and it can be shot down by enemy AA fire. Yeah. Now, next up, we have the second type of drone, which is going to be the strike drone. These are a bit different. So these are not so small, still a bit slow, uh, but they actually carry some dangerous ordnance. Kind of do, yeah. That's quick. There will be three different types. The one we're showing you today is going to be the MQ-1 for all nations except Russia and China. Russia and China will, will get their own uh, unique drone models. Uh, by the way, just a little note here. This is not a vehicle that will be in your lineup. We currently have it in our lineup. That's a... Uh... That's a Hellfire missile, if I remember correctly. Also used on the Apache, but it carries two of them for the Predator drone. <laughs> Not toxic whatsoever. <sighs> God. <laughs> for demonstration purposes, so we can show it to you properly. In the actual game, when the update releases, this will behave much like the nuclear bombers, uh, which appear at a certain bat rating. I believe for the drones, it's going to be 9.7 and above. So don't worry, you will not be facing a, a strike drones in your mouse. And uh, they will be automatically added to your lineup when you go into a battle at those battle ratings. But you cannot manually select them, you cannot customize them, they will not appear in your hangar. Just yes, yes, it's not premium, don't, don't freak out, please. Yes, it's also not the premium. Oh, um, since we are talking about premium, the RP that you gain with these recon drones, if you're flying a scout drone, uh, those um, the RP will go towards the vehicle that is controlling it, so towards modifications and towards ground research, since it is modification and such an extension of the vehicle itself. The strike drone, however, will gain RP for any aircraft that you are currently researching. Not modifications, of course, but any new aircraft that you're trying to go through in the research tree. I'm going to show you this in a test flight real quick as well. This particular version comes with uh, two Hellfire missiles. It also has a pretty long-range camera and uh, currently no thermal vision, but it should have thermal vision depending on the variants that you are flying. And of course, it does come with Hellfire missiles, which have an 8 kilometer range, much like the um, Hellfire missiles on helicopters. It does, however, fly very slowly, as you can see, uh, at level flight about 200 kilometers per hour. And these will, as far as I'm aware, spawn in the same point at effort spawn, which may mean that you spawn from 15 kilometers away. It'll take a while to get to the battle zone. Now, these drones do actually have a landing gear, so in theory, you could be able to capture points with these, but it's not going to be easy. It's so dinky. I like it. It is. It Little is. tiny baby landing gear. See, because the landing gear is so small, you don't actually have any brakes, which means the only way to stop this is like a PO2. You have to let it roll out, which is not ideal when you are trying to <laughs> land in a tight and confined space. The drone itself is also rather large. I'm going to try and fly a bit closer to the ground so What's you can that? see. Do they rip? What's their rip like? Uh, they can rip if they go fast enough, yes. Find out. Although I don't want to find out right now. <laughs> There's some wiggling going on there. At high speeds, it compresses a little bit, but the maneuverability is all right once you slow down, which I'm going to attempt to do. It is quite literally a toy plane. It's an RC plane. I love it's it. a little, little bab. Well, danger, Bab. I like it. The slower you go, the better it seems to turn effect. Look at that. Look at the turn. That's kind of nuts. That is very, very nice. That has to be the tightest turning circle. Oh, absolutely. I mean, apart from the recon drone. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah sure, I guess. Um, you can also um, fly quite slowly. The uh, stall speed is quite low. What's 50 to 60 kilometers per hour. So if you really want to, you can be a very, very slow target. And as you can see, the size is actually quite big in comparison to a tank. Along the wingspan of these drones is quite big. The recon drone is much, much smaller than this. Look at that. Yeah, like before this, I didn't really have any perspective on how big those were. Like, I, for whatever reason, I had a really different idea of what they looked like. Um, but yeah, oh, nice. Very pretty. Now, in theory, you could be able to shoot down planes with the Hellfires, although I do not believe they will automatically reload in the air, which means you will have to fly back to the airfields to uh, reload them. And Hellfires aren't the best at dealing with air targets. You could actually quite easily destroy helicopters with these, given that helicopters don't have the maneuverability to evade a Hellfire, usually speaking. And of course, you can also do a uh, third-person launch if you so wish. Uh, it's saying it will reload. That's just my test drive settings right now. In the battle, it doesn't, as far as I have tested so far. And yeah, that is your strike zone. It's not quite as powerful as people were fearing it yes. to be. This isn't really supposed to replace cast as it currently is. Any aircraft or helicopter will be way ahead in terms of capabilities in actual battle, but this will bring a option for players who may not. You have a vehicle to take out if you are in up tiers and you are fighting stuff that has a lot of armor, so like KT. H23s, which are nowhere near as powerful as the aircraft in Air RB. However, in... Okay, so... Taking a look at drones. <laughs> Um, the rest of the video is about new vehicles, I presume. There's a bunch of Cold War era T-80s. Um, SPAA. Is that? That looks like a... Sherman? 
Oh, wow. All right. But, um, yeah, drones. Uh, it's a different environment, so what the hell do I know? But, funny enough, World of Tanks haven't developed anything relating to artillery for the past seven or so years. So after we got the Brits, the British line, and after we got the British artillery, everything stopped. There's no more new artillery. Not for the Chinese, not for the Japanese or the new Polish, Swedish, Italian. They don't have artillery. So the British artillery was the last after the French artillery, I believe. The original three, the Americans, the German, the Russians already had artillery. So these two are the last nations to have artilleries. And also, artillery constantly got nerfed every other patch or so. So they introduced stun effects, they introduced other garbage with it, but um, these are our cancer, practically. I mean, it's still necessary when all the vehicles have strong turret armor and haul down tactics, so you need something to pry open the stalemate, so to speak. But for War Thunder, everything gets killed in one shot if you land a good hit. So that is more... I say... Increase the distance of engagement, so to speak. The maps are bigger than World of Tanks maps. World of Tanks maps are usually one kilometer by one kilometer, whereas War Thunder is like 10 kilometers or something, so like a hundred times bigger or something. But maybe even a little bit less, but still. You have aircraft to deal with, and revenge aircraft is a thing. So you get killed in your land vehicle, in your tank, and then the player goes into their aircraft and just revenge kill you with a bomb. Real fun. So, I don't know, it's... I'm an outsider watching it in from the sidelines, but... For drones, uh, you get the Predator drone at 9-something battle rating, so... Along with main battle tanks and other stuff, but... Yeah, I mean, you can crash into helicopters, so that's a plus. <laughs> that's a plus, so crashing to... Other thing, but holy crap, that's a big ass patch. I mean, we just had a big patch, but still, that's a lot of new vehicles. Like a lot. I don't know if they're a premium or just regular tech tree, but holy crap. Oh, there you go, folks. Outsider watching in on stuff happening in War Thunder, so. <laughs> would I rather have artillery or would I rather have helicopters and aircrafts? Oh crap. I mean, most of the time, based on the different maps, we can actually predict likely where the artillery is. So we can actually get into cover most of the time. But when you're dealing with aircrafts or attack helicopters, unless you have a very good shot with your main cannon from something like a, I don't know, like a mouse, <laughs> to deal with it, but yeah, most of the time you're dead. You're, you're sitting duck against a aircraft or attack helicopter. You can defend yourself a little bit with like 50 calibers or something, but I doubt it. You'll, you'll be killed in something like a Doom Turtle. You'll be stuck. So I would say I'd rather have artillery, but I haven't played long enough into War Thunder where helicopters is a thing. So that's might be a positive. <laughs> But there you go, folks. Uh, my just reaction to drones in War Thunder as a World of Tanks aficionado for some reason. So comparing Apple to like hookers or something. So totally different product. <laughs> totally different. Apple Farmer to a pimp. It's a totally different economy. So what the hell do I know? But um, <laughs> you can crash into a helicopter. Yeah, screw helicopters. It's a disgusting freaking <laughs> flying cancer. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, there's stuff I like about War Thunder. Like, you can use your machine guns. You can use your coaxial 75 on the mouse or something, which you cannot do in World of Tanks. Even though we already have the double gun system, we cannot use the 75 or... Is it a 75 or... It should be a 75. 
along with the Watcher 28. We cannot do that. So, or use the gigantic anti aircraft machine gun in the back. That would be amazing. That would be so much pay to win once you get the 3D skin. And the 3D skin unlocks the. the oh, the quad effect of anti aircraft machine gun in the back. Also, the flamethrower. Yeah, we don't have that. We do have a double barrel system, but it's only for particular tanks. So, coaxial guns. On uh, most of the vehicles, doesn't work. Machine guns don't work. That's unfortunate. Also, you have a big ass label over your vehicle, so you cannot just hide your tank with foliage and stuff. But also, some of the World of Tanks skins are crazy, like a gigantic anti aircraft machine gun covering up half your screen, <laughs> preventing you from shooting with your reticle unless you go into gunner sights. So, there are a few upsides, there are a few downsides, but. For now, I guess everything is balanced. <laughs> so, hopefully you guys enjoy uh, Drone Age if you're playing War Thunder, but <laughs> looks looks controversial, so to speak. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.